starting with the great name of almighty allah who is the most gracious and most beneficent okay now the uh, problem on the design of the shear key for the retaining wall so the problem statement is design a cantilever retaining wall to support a bank of the earth 16.5 feet high the top of the earth is to be level with the surcharge means along with the bank uh, back fill there is a surcharge uh, of the uniformly load that is 350 psf another given data is the weight of the back fill is uh, 110 psf the angle of the internal friction is 35 degree the coefficient of the friction between the concrete and the soil is 0.5 the coefficient of friction between the soil layers are 0.7 and the allowable bearing capacity is 4 ksf and the uh, and the data is also given for the material property that is the f'c that is 3 ksi and f'y 60 ksi okay first of all what we in the very first step first we will try to find the dimensions of the retaining wall and then what we will do we will check it against those factors which are uh, you know uh, for designing we firstly first design the uh, the structures dimensions then we check it for the those factor which are causing the failures so in the retaining wall there are the three factors which cause the failures one is the overturning second is the sliding and third is the soil bearing capacity so we have to check for these three things whether they are adequate or not or can uh, the structure can sustain it not or not so for trial basis we are uh, uh, finding the dimensions firstly the height of the wall a uh, height of the wall allowing 3 feet for the frost penetration uh, to the bottom of the fit in the front of the wall the height of the wall will becomes x uh, h is equals to 16.5 feet in 3 now here in this figure you can see that the uh, height of the back fill is about 6.5 like uh, here the height of the back fill uh, is about up to here is 6.5 additional 3 ft is for the frost line because if the water will penetrate into the soil uh, the soil will become uh, moist and then there is the chance of the uh, uh, there is a chance that the, this uh, stem which is uh, which is on the uh, act, uh, which is placed on to the on to this uh, <clears throat> on to this base of the slab can get uh, the the stem can punch out the uh, stem can punch out the base that's why what we do we will provide uh, sorry not punch out but will uh, penetrate somehow uh, from uh, due to the bottom fro uh, frost action uh, due to the smoothening of the soil Uh, that's why we provide for the safety of the uh, safety factor additional 3 ft to the uh, to the height of the back fill so that in case that that little penetration occurs still the retaining wall may easily retain okay then the, uh, so height will become 19.5 ft with the additional 3 ft then second is the base thickness assuming base thickness is from the guideline there was given in range we are taking minimum that is 0.08 times height multiplying the height that is 9.5 we comes out to be 1.56 but we take the uh, appro uh, approximate value why because we have to see also that uh, that whether it can be used can be it can be easily implemented into the field or not that's why we just take the approximate value that is 1.5 then the height of the stem is height of the stem now we have to find okay from the figure you can see that total uh, height will be becomes 9.5 when we will subtract the base thickness that is uh, 1.5 then <coughs> sorry this footing then uh, the stem th uh, stem height will be uh, the then we will find the stem height that uh, that will be a uh, 19.5 minus 1.5 that comes out to be 18 ft okay now the base length varies between 0.4 h to the 0.6 h now assuming an average value of uh, average why we are taking here average uh, uh, because at the field we have to keep the safety factor so most suitable thing is to whenever we are given the ranges we must go for the uh, try we must find the average value that's why we are uh, taking the average the base length will be equals to the uh, the 0.5 times uh, 53 times h 19.5 is the height and it comes out to be 10.3 ft so the base length is 10.3 ft but now we have to find the projection first of all what we will do we will find the projection for the uh, pro pro uh, projection for the toe portion because toe is the portion where the <coughs> toe is the portions which is opposite to the back fill and taking and uh, it will take the uh, maximum load that's why we will first design the projection of the 
toe then we will go for the projection at the heel side so this portion is the toe portion and this portion is the heel portion okay so for that for that what we do uh, the projection of the base in front of this uh, in front of the stem varies from 0.17 uh, h to the 0.125 h assuming a projection of 0.17 h means 0.15 factor multiplied by the height we will that comes out to be 3.3 but we are again taking it 3.5 fit to easily implement in the field so then we have to uh, calculate the stem thickness the maximum stem uh, stem thickness is at the bottom of the wall and varies between this range choose a maximum stem thickness equals to the 1.5 fit select a particular minimum thickness of the stem at the pot, uh, top and the minimum batter space of the 1 by 4 fit for this okay what's it saying that uh, what we have to do if you could see in this figure that minimum thickness we keep over the uh, according to the guidelines at the top of the this uh, tapering section of the stem would be about one fit and at the bottom we uh, from top to bottom it will vary one by four inch per fit okay from uh, inch to inch it will uh, overall increase per fit for per fit it will change <coughs> so one by four into 18 that will comes out to be 14.5 inch which is less than the 1.5 minus 1.1 uh, now what is this better now <coughs> if you can see in this figure the 14.5 is better means up to here we have this rectangular portion for which we uh, from the upper portion we got the one fit thickness from the bottom as it is a tapering section so it will become means uh, 4.5 so we know that we have calculated the projection for the toe that is 3 3.5 fit subtracting that uh, we will get this 0.5 <coughs> all right so next step is the now we have got the dimensions now we have to calculate uh, the rankings from the ranking uh, rankings equation coefficient of the active pressure so the coefficient here here first of all we are uh, ignoring the passive pressure in this case firstly uh, so that's why we are just calculating the active pressure uh, angle of internal friction we know that that was given in the formula that was uh, in the problem statement that was 35 degree putting this values and th that will comes out to be 0.271 that is the coefficient of active pressure now the factor of safety against overturning okay we have to provide a factor uh, we have to check for the safety of the uh, safety against overturning so i will explain you this that the calculate the actual unfactored forces now if you can see this figure oh uh, wait this figure now you can see that weights are acting downward okay so in this figure see that the uh, total weight of the this retaining wall is uh, is acting downward but the horizontal soil uh, that the horizontal force of the back fill is acting in this direction in this this uh, in this that you are seeing horizontal component so this vertical component which is acting uh, acting will be result uh, will be somewhere here is a resultant component so this resultant component uh, along with will uh, when it will act here when we will multiply the uh, you know wait when here the resultant force will act of the retaining wall if we are taking if we will calculate the overturning moment from this side what will happen the back fill that is uh, the those horizontal forces are acting in this direction so it will generate a, a, a moment that will be in this direction anti clockwise but if we will calculate the moment overturning moment from the heel portion which is this then what will happen it will support the overturning not it will not uh, uh, counter balance that's why what we do we take this from uh, moment from the toe portion uh, which will be acted in this direction this weight multiplied by this uh, moment arm uh, so this clockwise and anti clockwise will counter balance each other and the uh, so we will be safe in the balancing balancing the overturning moment so this is the overturning moment and this is uh, how it is balanced by the balanced when we will calculate the 
movement along the toe. Okay. So now calculating the actual fact and factor moment. First of all, what we will do first, we, we will calculate the factored uh, unfactored forces. Firstly, due to the surcharge here in this case, uh, we have also given the surcharge surcharge of three uh, 330 UDL. So we have also it is given in the UDL. We have to convert into the head head pressure. So that's why we are converting it for converting in what we will do. We will divide the load UDL divide by the unit weight of the soil that is 110 110 and then that comes out to be three feet. So that's we have that we have converted now. Now pressure due to the surcharge. But uh, so for that we will multiply the coefficient of active pressure multiply by unit weight and multiply by the head head of the soil. So that is 0.271 that we calculated. And then 110 is the unit weight and 3 is the head. Similarly, due to the backfill, the pressure will be generated also uh, for the backfill. The pressure will be also there. So CA is the coefficient of active pressure that we have already calculated unit weight is same 110 given in the problem and head would be this time 19.5 uh, because backfill was we, we, we calculate up to the height of the uh, because uh, up to the height of the uh, retaining wall that is 9.5. So these are the two pressures that are acting. Now we will find the uh, horizontal forces that are acting. Those were pressure. Now I have to convert those into the horizontal forces. Now here we I have drawn a pressure distribution diagram. So in the pressure we have already calculated. So the we know that the soil uh, exerts makes uh, with the uh, with from the top to bottom the soil pressure increases. So the profile of the bake fill will be in this triangular portion, but you are looking also here the rectangular portion. So the surcharge is acting in the UDL uniformly loaded for uniformly loaded soil. The profile is made in the rectangular shape. That's why this rectangular shape is made and then a uh, triangular shape is made. So this one, this one is showing the stress portion due to the surcharge and this one is showing the stress portion due to the bake fill. Now we have to find the horizontal load. So when we will find the area of this rectangular portion and the area of this, we, uh, so area will represent the load. So let's find for the triangular, uh, for this uh, rectangular portion. Thickness here for this and this will be the pressures that we have already calculated. For this rectangular portion, it is due to the surcharge. So we are, we have also cal uh, is calculated its pressure that was 90, multiplying its height. Okay, so its height up to here is the uh, height is 19.5. So the load will become 17.7 uh, 1755 LB. Now, uh, now area of the triangle. Now thickness is the pressure that we already calculated due to the back pill. That was the 581. As we know, the area of the triangle is 1 by 2 into base into height. Base is 581. That is pressure, indicating pressure and height is 19.5. So this is how we have calculated this uh, horizontal pressures due to this uh, due, uh, due to the action of the surcharge and the back pill. Now we will find the moment arm. So the if we, you know that the rectangular portions resultant x at the half of the height, so h by 2. So the total height is 19.5. Its half will become 9.75 for rectangular portion. We know that from geometry it is uh, it's, uh, it is it x at the h by 3 from the perpendicular side. That's why we are dividing total height divided by 3. That comes out to be 16.5 fit. So that's again a figure. OK, now we have to calculate the overturning moment. What we will do, we will multiply horizontal forces multiply by o moment arm. OK, again for the second uh, force, multiply by momentum. We have calculated this again. Uh, previously it was in LB. Now it is in Kips. So multiplying this and adding both, we will get the overturning moment. That is the 53.93 Kip per fit. Uh, Kip fit, sorry, Kip fit. Now calculate the balancing moment against overturning. OK. It will be calculated about the toe. Now this is the portions. These are the portions uh, we have. I have cut it this trapezoidal portion. Uh, into the two, one the, in the rectangular portion, other is a triangular, uh, rectangular in the triangular portion. So first is W1, that is the rectangular portion. So we have 
as i have told you that load uh, represent uh, so the area represents the load so here we will again calculate with this geometry from its geometry the load what we will do is uh, we will calculate first for the this portion uh, these portions for w1 w3 and w4 for w1 it's a rectangular so its the thickness is one fit from the top and its height is Okay, here you can say one into eighteen, and one fifty is the unit weight of the concrete. So that comes out to be uh, this two thousand and seven hundred for W two. That is the uh, triangular portion. For the triangular portion, area will be one by two into base into height. Base is zero point five feet. Okay, and height of the triangular is again eighteen, uh, and multiply by one point one by two. Okay, this uh, this is 0.5 written here in by 1 by 2, and 150 is the unit weight of the concrete. Then W3. Okay, W3 is the base slab. Uh, okay, then area is 1.5 total. Multi, uh, if you will add this 3.5, 1.5, and 5.5, it will be 10.5. So that will comes out 10.5 into 1.5 into the uh, 150 is a unit weight. Then W4. W4 is the backfill for the uh, okay backfill. That's the backfill area of the backfill. Backfill is up to here. Okay, that's the uh, ending point that is indicated with these dotted lines. So height is uh, height is 18. Multiply by uh, this is up from here to here. You can say it's 5.5 feet. Okay, so area will become 5.5 and 221. Now why 221? Because we cannot ignore this surcharge. 18 plus this 3, we that will become 21. Okay, so this must uh, you must not uh, forget to add the height of the surcharge also because that is also a force that is acting on the retaining wall and parts with the backfill. So multiplying with the uh, soil <coughs> unit weight of the soil that is one ten, and the answer will be twelve hundred one two seven zero five moment arm. Now their respective moment arms. So for W1 moment arm, uh, uh, as we are calculating these are all moments from the toe. So just uh, see that from the W1, it, this resultant force will act from this uh, half of the rectangular portion. That will be 0.5 means half of the one fit plus 0.5 that will become one fit and plus three is 3.5 that will become 4.5 fit. Now for W2, what will be the moment arm? As it is a rectangular portion, it will be two by three from the here, from uh, a and uh, h by three from here. So two by three will be uh, the one point two uh, by three will be of the this zero point five. Okay, this is the base. So zero point five by three, its answer plus three this three point five will be the moment arm for the W two. For W four. Half of this base portion because uh, about two we have to find and for rectangular portion it takes at the center uh, means at the center so half of 5.5 plus 1.5 plus 3.5 so this is how moment arm are calculated here it is written uh, directly written okay so moment arm so multiply all the forces with the moment arm you will find the total moment so uh, calculate some the all the forces. Some of the all the vertical forces comes out to be 18.44. Some of the all the moments comes out to be 125.61 kip feet. Now a factor of safety. If this moment, uh, when we will divide this moment with the total force, vertical force is greater than two, then it is okay against the overturning. So yes, it is okay because it's 2.33. Okay. Okay, now calculate the base soil pressure. Why we are calculating base soil pressure? Again, I said that soil bearing capacity is also essential. That whether the uh, whether the retaining wall that is acting the force in the reaction. Okay, so this force that you are looking, this retaining wall will act uh, some force to the soil. Then in return, similarly the uh, uh, the soil will also act the. Uh, <coughs> reaction soil will also show the reaction so we have to check whether it is okay or not firstly we will calculate the distance at which the resultant is acting okay now this resultant if i could show you here 
now we know that some of the horizontal vertical forces are acting downward horizontal forces are acting in uh, acting also so this is the vertical component and this is the horizontal component resultant will be roughly somewhere here okay so we have to find the distance from the toe where it is located so that's what our task is now so for finding that we have to uh, subtract the moment minus uh, uh, vertical force vertical force divided by total force balancing moment minus overturning moment divided by some of the vertical forces that comes out to be 3.85 one way is this to calculate 3.85 if it is not uh, if it is not greater than 3.5 then you can also use 3.5 it's up to you if okay here we have it is it is come to uh, it have come 3.85 so you can use either 3.5 or this or if it will be less than then we what we will do we will uh, we will use this 3.5 okay now eccentricity so from uh, this side we have calculated that it is 3.5 okay then uh, about how much it, this resultant force is far from the center means half of 10.5 base of this slab so we have to find that Uh, that from this side it is 3.4 about how much it is far from this side so that's the eccentricity we have to find so this eccentricity is when we will subtract 3.89 from half of it that comes out to be 1.36 fit means this uh, this much it is far from the center of the uh, uh, resultant is center of the base the resultant rx within the middle third of the base and has a eccentricity of 1.36 fit from the center of the base now we have to calculate for one fit length of the footing area for one fit because we are calculating for one fit that's why multiplying the base uh, base that is 10.5 multiply by 1 that comes out to be area again we have to calculate moment of inertia bd cube by 12 for the rectangular so base is the 1 and uh, and 10.5 from cross section it is taking and that's why 10.5 cube by 12 this is the moment of inertia now as i uh, told that this uh, this load that retaining wall is acting some there will be some stresses in the reaction that that are acting from the bottom in the upward side so these are those q1 and q2 q1 is the maximum and q2 is minimum these are the formula r is the where r is the um, uh, total vertical load a is the area then it is far because it is acting also at the eccentricity means other than center that's why this formula is used my upon i stresses formula is my upon i where m is moment is equals to uh, load that is vertical load r e is the moment x is a moment arm and y is half of the half of the base and i is the moment of inertia by putting these all values we will get the maximum stress and just changing the symbol from plus to minus that will be the minimum stress so if this uh, maximum is less than 4 ksa then we will say that soil be bearing capacity is enough so it's safe in the in case of the soil now we have to see so this is the figure in which it clearly shows that this is the maximum force that is acting on the toe portion that's why i have drawn this profile and the minimum at the heel that is the 0.35 and these are the distances that we have also calculated now the calculate the factor of safety against sliding now the minimum factor of safety against sliding is 1.5 must be maintained first what force is causing sliding as i told you that the vertical forces acting on this is causing overturning but but the uh, sorry uh, yes sorry this uh, how, this uh, vertical uh, weight is uh, back fill is also causing the uh, back fill is causing the overturning and also it can cause the, break the connection between the soil and this concrete slab and sliding can also occur so uh, we have to check that whether the friction is enough or not uh, for that what we'll do we will Uh, multiply this horizontal force which is uh, you know pushing this retaining wall whether and against the friction which is which will act between the concrete and the soil so that uh, sliding may occur or not for that uh, we have to check 
ओके फोर्स एक्टिंग कॉजिंग स्लाइडिंग इज एच ए वन दैट इज एच वन एंड एच टू एच टू वी विल प्लस वन पॉइंट सेवन सिक्स एंड फाइव पॉइंट सिक्स सेवन टोटल हॉरिजेंटल फोर्स एंड रेजिस्टिंग फोर्स विल बी फ्रिक्शन वी नो द फ्रिक्शन फॉर्मूला म्यू इंटू म्यू इंटू आर टोटल वर्टिकल फोर्स दैट इज जीरो पॉइंट फाइव इंटू एट पॉइंट फोर फोर विल कम्स आउट टू बी नाइन पॉइंट टू टू Now the factor of safety is calculated by dividing the resistance force with the force causing sliding. That comes up to be 1.24. That is less than 1.5. So this is not okay against the sliding. That's why we have to check for the. Uh, we have to provide some uh, another thing that is the shear key. We have to uh, design. So why we design shear key? We can also. you know uh, again say it and increase the dimensions but we are not doing that because because to, uh, we have to keep in mind the safety of the factor safety factor in uh, in the mind also so that's why now we have to design the shear key if the resistance provided does not give an adequate safety against sliding in this case a key should be provided to develop a passive pressure large enough to resist the excessive force that caused the sliding another function of the key is to provide sufficient developmental length of the dowel stems now one thing is that that this what will do if we will provide the shear key what will happen passive pressure will be generated from the opposite side of the, uh, and this pressure passive pressure is generated from the soil again from the opposite side of the backfill what will this passive pressure will do it will retain also helps in retaining wall means this Pressure, passive pressure along with this retaining wall will retain the, the backfill. So uh, that's why uh, we are, uh, you know, creating a situation uh, and uh, constructing this key to large the retaining wall, uh, large the uh, this passive pressure because this will increase the depth of the. Uh, this will be penetrated into the soil. That's why passive pressure will be increased. Secondly, if we are providing any reinforcement in the stem. it will help to dovel uh, you know we will provide a bend into the key it will be extended up to the key so helps in that also so these are the two functions of the key so the key is therefore placed such that it is facing about 6 inch far from the back face of the stem okay so it's it is far from it is far about 6 inch we have kept these uh, we are now setting the trial dimensions in the calculation of the passive pressure the top foot of the earth at the toe side is neglected having the two foot in this example okay mostly what we do we ignore the top soil up to the uh, two foot but uh, up to the uh, uh, two foot but here we are just ignoring one foot in this uh, in this problem so in this calculation passive pressure the top foot of the earth at the toe side is usually neglected having height means keeping this two foot in this example now assuming the dimensions for the key key depth should be 1.5 ft and width should be 1.5 ft so how because there are no relationship i have shown here then how we have got these uh, two because if there is a person who is unexperienced then how will he decide that we have to trial for trial dimensions choose this 1.5 and 1.5 we have to look at the base thickness so as we know that base thickness we kept 1.5 so looking on to it we have just kept the depth and have decided the uh, trial dimensions for the key for now that is 1.5 and uh, width 1.5 okay so that's what we have decided let's check whether it is adequate or not for that as we uh, 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 first we were calculating stresses due to uh, which is acting on the base now here will be there will be change in the reaction because now we have also designed the shear key that's why we will find the stresses at two point one uh, one at the eight at the point where the resultant was acting one at the point at the starting of the shear key okay so for that what we will do this formula is used qx is equals to q1 q uh, minus q1 minus q2x upon l we know that we have found that maximum and minimum shear stresses we found in the previous step x is distance now this formula is used wherever uh, this x indicates uh, the point at which a uh, distance at which you want to find the stress all you have to do is to change just x value l will be same q1 and q2 will be same so q1 and q2 we know l we know that of the base 
so at the point 3.5 and 4.5 why because i said that we will calculate at the point uh, where the resultant force will act and we know that resultant force was acting 3.5 feet far from the toe and also the key is starting 3.5 plus 1 feet far from the uh, from the toe so that's why we are uh, taking this putting 3.5 here and 4.5 we will get the q values okay now these uh, we have calculated we have also calculated the passive pressure because we have generated the passive pressure again here that is the uh, now we will calculate the first of all uh, coefficient of passive pressure just we will invert that value of the coefficient of active pressure that comes out to be 3.69 now the horizontal active pressure will be the area of this portion hp right so that will be half stress will be at the bottom side cp wht at uh, ht plus t this height this is uh, height basically this is okay so this height we will multiply because we were ignoring one fit so ignoring one fit this height will be 2 plus 1.5 fit okay this 1.5 that will comes out to be 2486 lbs now the sliding occur now on the surface is a to c and then c to d and then e to f okay this e to f so looking on to the figure we have got to know that sliding will occur here so the sliding surface ac lies within the soil layers if you will cut down this portion this in this portion you can see there is no shear key if in this portion there is shear key means there is only soil layers there are not any uh, there is a shear key concrete isn't uh, came in the contact of the soil that's why uh, angle of internal friction we will find and then we will also find the where is the cd and ef are those between the concrete and soil that's why we are uh, taking the internal friction because of the uh, because the, because of this key uh, that is the soil and uh, concrete and soil that is 0.5 now we have to find the now we have to find how much resistance after this shear key is uh after this shear key is designed will be offered by the uh, of will be offered okay so for that what we will do first of all we will find the total reactions acting at the ac and total reaction forces acting on the uh, on this portion okay so what we will do we know from this stress diagram that we draw we found these stresses 2.2 and this also uh, in the previous steps so it is uh, from the geometry you can see this is the trapezoidal shape from the trapezoidal again you know that from the stress diagram if we will find the area that will be as a act as a load so area of the trapezoidal is half sum of the parallel multiplied by the perpendicular height perpendicular distance okay so parallel portions we have to find resultant at ac and resultant at cdf c d and f and at ac so the resultant at a to c up to air means uh, maximum 3.13 and at c it is 1.96 so the parallel are the parallel sides uh, will become 3.13 and 1.96 and the distance between these parallel point is the 5.5 3.5 and 1 fit okay so this is how it is calculated reactional force similarly for the cdf we have calculated uh, that 1.96 and 0.3 these are the parallels and the distance between them is uh, is uh, 14.5 plus 1.5 that is 6 that comes out to be this reaction now multiplying these r1 with the uh, 0.7 in case we are because here was only soil that's why 0.7 and 0.5 in between the uh, because there is a shear key the contact between the shear key and the shear key and the soil so finding the uh, uh, friction is this now the next step is the total resistance force will become force plus the uh, plus the uh, horizontal uh, horizontal passive pressure so that is we have to add these two and have to check now whether it is uh, safe against the sliding or not we will divide this 3.199 uh, that is the resisting force by the by this 7.43 now the 7.43 we have calculated in the previous uh, steps so dividing these this will comes out to be 1. Uh, 
sorry uh, we will divide 11 point uh, 5 divide by 7.43 that will comes out to be uh, 1.55 that is greater than 1.5 that means that it is okay now now the factor is greater than 1 by which is recommended when the passive so uh, so it is safe against sliding so you you can use 1.5 fit and 1.5 fit shear key thanks that's all